Yeah, we can start the program. Now, uh, today's program is uh, recapitulation. So we need to discuss what all we have done in the yesterday's uh, program, yesterday's training program. So anybody, uh, uh, Dr. Amir, you can uh, just take it forward or anybody uh, who wants to say that what, were, what was the main focus during the yesterday's training, you are free to comment, you are free to say, you can unmute yourself, you can... Uh, and also, if, uh, if you have some queries, uh, so you are most welcome to yeah. raise those queries, uh, which we could not uh, discuss yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And uh, today... So some uh, of the things which... Please continue. Yeah. Yeah, please, 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 uh, Dr. Ramay. Yeah, so but there is a slight change in the program of today. Uh, we have reversed the order of presentations due to uh, some unavoidable circumstances at uh, the organizing team level. So Dr. Laldin Puya will uh, take the first lecture today and then Professor Chandan Ghosh will come in the second lecture. So this is one of the things which uh, all of us has to take a note. So this is one. Uh, in addition to that, uh, yesterday, uh, we had a good, uh, very, very fruitful discussion. And uh, we, we had uh, a lot of uh, uh, deliberations include uh, like the inaugural part, uh, we have uh, Ashok K. Singh Sa, uh, who highlighted uh, the need and all those things led to uh, landslide risk mitigation and uh, the uh, various uh, activities taken up uh, by Department of Science and Technology. So uh, that was uh, the keynote, uh, the main attraction of the inaugural part. And then uh, Dr. Devesh Walia definitely highlighted uh, so many things. So uh, I will request anyone, including uh, the volunteer team, uh, which is working uh, at NEHU level or Department of Geology level, you can recapitulate uh, some, some highlights what uh, Professor Walia has uh, discussed. Any one of you. Uh, sir, I also have a couple of questions which were uh, put in the chat yesterday, which we couldn't go through. Uh, let's start uh, with that. But brief, yeah. briefly, you you just uh, summarize uh, what uh, Professor Walia has uh, uh, discussed and then uh, raise the questions. At least the, both the sessions, just uh, key, key okay. highlights. One or yeah. two sentences, two, three sentences. Okay. Let's see. And then okay. we will uh, come for a question answer session. Okay, sure, sir. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, a very good mo good morning to everyone on behalf of Department of Geology, Northeastern uh, Hill University, Silong. I welcome you all to the second day of training program on landslide risk mitigation and management in Northeast India, which is jointly organized by the Department of Geology, Northeastern Hill University, Silong, and in collaboration with National Institute of Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India. In the yesterday's session, the first speaker, Professor Devesh Walia, highlighted the various activities associated with landslides, triggering factors, potential landslide indicators, and various initiatives to stabilize the landslide in Northeast India. And the second speaker, Dr. Saival Ghosh, Director, Geology, Geohazards Research and Management Center, Geological Survey of India, Kolkata, emphasized on the importance of multi-scale landslide hazard analysis to better understand the mechanism of landslides and mitigate the after effects of landslide, especially in urban areas. So uh, now I request Professor Devesh Walia, Head of the Department of Geology, Nehu Silong, um, to, give, to give a brief overview of yesterday's session and kindly enlighten the participants. Oh, you have given me only this responsibility. No, it's, it's not you your responsibility. responsibility. I also... Uh, no, 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 you uh, have already mentioned what uh, he talked about. So, uh, uh, just just to summarize uh, Prof. Dr. Ghosh's uh, presentation as well in, in a brief, and then we will go for a question answer session. Okay. Yeah, you only can do it. Yeah, just one Otherwise, or two sentences. That's all. Sir, uh, 
So I yeah. have already actually just uh, if, okay. as she has said that uh, just to tell you, uh, dear friends, that mm -hmm. yesterday we discussed uh, uh, about the various uh, types of landslides. Basically, we started with what are the landslides, what are the various types, and how they are distributed in northeast uh, India. What is the impact of uh, landslides on socio-economy of the region? And likewise, many important aspects were discussed. But along with this, we also discussed uh, the various parameters, various indicators through which you can identify early or the starting phase or the initial phase of the landslide so that at least if not the property, not the infrastructure, at least the life can be saved. We have also seen that in this region, because uh, the landsliding normally starts with either excessive rainfall or earthquake, they are the triggering phenomena. So once landsliding starts, and because in this region excessive rainfall is there, so it it facilitates further, and because of which very high speed under the force of gravity movement down of the material may take place and it may become disastrous. That's what in in short. Uh, about yesterday's talk. We also and talked that uh, because in the northeastern region, uh, most of the landslides are due to the in anthropogenic interventions. So before taking up any major task, major work, we should definitely take care of the various structures. Like I told in the yesterday that especially the geomorphological features, which are indicative of dormant landslides. So if we activate them, then it may go out of control. So that's it uh, for the yesterday's. Yeah, Dr. Amir, you were saying. Yeah, I was just saying that uh, the criticality of Northeast uh, and landslide is that the uh, entire region is 100% uh, hilly, uh, except uh, some some uh, two, two river valleys, that's all. So that makes the critical aspect of the entire region. And then the this anthropogenic regions, uh, highly seismic uh, region, and then heavy rainfall. So all these are the critical parameters has already been summarized. So the thing is, uh, we have to keep all these things in mind always when, when we are talking about uh, risk mitigation for land, land landslide risk mitigation in this region. So there are certain uh, natural phenomena which are beyond our control and certain uh, man-made reasons or anthropogenic reasons over which uh, we can have some control and we can uh, mitigate the impact of uh, uh, landslides, but a delicate balance has to be developed so that uh, we, we can come out uh, with this. So in the same uh, series, we are uh, moving towards uh, discussion today and uh, uh, Dr. Lalin Puya is uh, going to uh, talk about uh, the inst instrumentation and uh, how, how to go for uh, the next step, uh, what, what we built up yesterday. That And then uh, we are going in the last lecture by Professor Chandan Ghosh on how to start mitigation. So this is uh, the thing uh, for today. Uh, instrumentation, we are going to how to assess the balance uh, light prone areas and all those things civil is going to talk about. And uh, this is in brief. And uh, Yogita, are you there? If you are there, you please uh, take the uh, summary for today and, uh, sure. you, and uh, make a brief uh, discussion tomorrow morning about- Okay, uh, sure, sir recapitulation and all those things for uh, today for today's uh, things you know so sure, uh, we will yeah. start with the recapitulation just uh, in brief two three four five sentences uh, per lecture not more than that and okay, then uh, we will take the question and uh, uh, in the same series uh, shikhar kumar sahab uh, can, can you raise those questions which uh, we had uh, left over from yesterday's discussion or presentations okay sir so, Dr. Uh, start... uh, uh, please. Yes, sir. Uh, so, yesterday, uh, the couple of questions which we left yesterday, we are going to ask now. Uh, Pallavi Bura asked yesterday, uh, can you kindly enlighten us or suggest some techniques by how the village people or the local people can stop or reduce the landslides at a community level? Uh, yeah, it, it is a good uh, question because anything, because these landslides, as we discussed uh, yesterday, 
they are not very catastrophic they are not at a very uh, uh, very big scale that so as to say they are on a very local scale and they are a large scale events are there so if early recognition of such zones are there definitely uh, they can be protected they can be taken care of by the timely intervention by the communities so uh, before moving on uh, yogita you are just summarizing so please uh, do that sure sir i will take note of it sir yeah please and uh, what uh, yeah. dr valya was uh, mentioning uh, before that uh, because one of the important reason for landslide uh, in that region is the anthropogenic so we have to control those activities which are leading to landslides uh, like uh, your uh, cultivation like uh, cutting of uh, slopes for housing uh, for for uh, developing those uh, paths at local level so those those are uh, the initial trigger points and uh, we have to create that awareness and uh, this point is uh, coming uh, time and again that uh, how to how to uh, involve the local communities and uh, make them aware about uh, those things and if uh, some some trigger uh, phenomena is observed then uh, we can definitely uh, involve them in risk mitigation uh, dr laldin puya you have a lot of experiences of uh, Uh, managing landslides at local level how to involve community in that can you highlight something your uh, local experiences in mizoram okay thank you sir so in mizoram so the uh, you have a group of uh, ngo so one group uh, called it yeah mizoram association play important roles in a community level so uh, as you know from uh, ndi ndma guidelines so every village every local locality have a disaster management committee mm -hmm. so you train them uh, then they also investigate before the uh, disaster happen and after and during disaster they are very useful for helping or coping of this uh, and helping others and all these things uh, after Uh, disaster also they are very helpful in community level mostly as uh, in other states uh, you have a community like uh, disaster management committee so they do accordingly as they plan yeah very correct actually uh, no, before the disaster is one thing but after the disaster or landslide occurrence also their role is of great importance very very correct Uh, do we have uh, one any other question, Dr. Shikhar? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, she yes, was. Sir. Letter, there's, there's one letter, more. Letter, letter compile, uh, Dr. Ramil. Let uh, Yogita say something about uh, both the programs of yesterday. Both the lectures. Uh, I, I doubt uh, she she is ready. Are you ready, ready Yogita, for uh, summarizing yesterday's proceedings? Um, sir, I can uh, give a brief in general. so uh, or, or or maybe tomorrow we have a better structured one uh, dr valya because we have already given uh, some some brief uh, today about yesterday's uh, proceeding so yeah. maybe tomorrow we will start with far better better uh, structured uh, one and uh, so right. uh, because okay. we are already okay. the time is already there yeah that's why i'm saying so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. take one or two questions and then we will go for the formal presentation for today all right all right yeah please uh, dr uh, shikhar you can place one or two more questions so there is one more question so okay. uh, yesterday uh, miss vanur pui asked are the criteria for large scale slope, slope stability investigations and the investigation in landslide affected areas the same are the criteria for both these investigations same or not yeah uh, just to respond to her query that uh, there are standard operating procedures sops for studying the landslides one which is uh, which is mandated by bureau of indian standards bis and they are already published then standard operating procedures 
by Geological Survey of India. They are also already published through their website, both the websites, you can get it. And then even the ISRO has prepared the guidelines to study the, the, the various landslides and of various scales. So you can consult. But the important thing is that NDMA, National Disaster Management Authority, they have created the guidelines compiling all the requirements of the state governments and those guidelines, I can share it. Actually, I thought to share yesterday also because DPR is with reference to that, that any person who wants to prepare any project, say if you are there in Nagaland or in Mizoram and you want to take up the work with reference to landslide, then the government of India through National Disaster Management Authority prepared a guideline that what all information you should give and how much money you can you can get to carry out large scale mapping of any of the of the landslides anywhere in india so that is what is the dpr and that if your proposal but normally government of india wants that now they don't give they don't want the research in the field of uh, of uh, landsliding whereas they want that it should have some society or community benefit attached to it so they want that one of the partners in in that uh, uh, project proposals should be the government of of any state government along with the government of india so that the the line agencies or the users agencies are able to use the information created so that's what is this dpr is all about because it says that your project proposal should also uh, uh, include the information about the community which is going to get benefited or the the government line departments which are going to utilize that data so that's what so now you know that there are four existing things are there the fourth one ndma gives you funding also to carry out the work it is very clear and they give you money and uh, uh, money but that part has to be utilized by uh, your research, your finding has to be utilized by some state government or their line department. I hope uh, I have explained the, the answer of your question very, very uh, clearly. Yeah, Dr. Shikhar, next, next query is there, or Dr. Amir, if you want to add. No, it's okay. Let's go for the anything. last question and then uh, just to start uh, today's proceedings. All right, sir. One and, last question. And, and if yeah. time is permitting, yes. we will take more questions towards the end when uh, Professor Ghosh and uh, Dr. Laldin Puya is also uh, involved. So we will take more questions yeah, towards the end if time is permitting. Let's start the formal one after this question. Yes, sir. Uh, another question from uh, Ms. Varnur Pui. Uh, what is the best technique in a city where retaining wall has failed to hold loose soil? yeah so this is a uh, case of uh, wrongly placing the retaining wall it is a very simple case it means one very important thing that retaining walls say the engineering uh, teaches us that you are able to control the landslides but not only by by putting any force any structure it is not complete as has been discussed or told by both of us yesterday uh, Dr. Shabal Ghosh also and me also, that the main culprit is the water or especially the rainwater. Now, if you just make a retaining wall and the retaining wall doesn't, doesn't have proper weeping holes and it is not supported on the top and the excessive water goes on, so finally it is going to make or it, it is going to loosen the retaining wall. So the most important thing is that there needs to be drainage. Yesterday, I just touched upon uh, uh, some of the areas in Arunachal Pradesh where wherever landsliding, say leading to uh, Jaswantgarh and all, wherever landslide zones were there, on top of the hill, they have made the drainage following the contour. And at the bottom also, they have made the drainage following the contour and the water is taken out from there excessive water is taken out from there and the simple retaining walls are able to withstand the load of the, the the top soil and all so most important thing that not by simple one engineering structure you can control there has to be a, a, 
multi scale multi uh, usage of uh, the the uh, the mitigation measures so that you are able to actually control or have control on the landslides say if there is a area on the foothill and on the top of the hill you know that excessive water is there so you need to divert that water at a fast pace so that it doesn't impact the lower stages same way in mizoram by by putting up the retaining wall or in even in nagaland on way to uh, to uh, to kohima they are trying to control it by putting some engineering structures you cannot until unless you measure the basic root of uh, the cause of uh, the landslide so that's what is of importance for us to understand that by simple one structure now say for example if one retaining wall has fallen if you again make the same retaining similar retaining wall it may again fall so you need to remove the basic cause of the 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 landslide in that particular zone that is one of the causes is the excessive water so you need to take that water from that zone to some other zone so that the area can be stabilized thank you may i add sir uh, i will lose to eight uh, some points only so first uh, you should yeah, please. remove all unexcavated soil then second retaining walls will be asked for specification in the road congress specifications say that the retaining walls should uh, base width should be uh, that there is a formula is a core base width is equal to uh, height into multiplied by three and plus by 0.3. That is the formula as per Indian Road Congress specifications. So most of the retaining wall collapse due to uh, the construction is not uh, as per specification. Yeah, he got muted. Dinpuya, you got muted, it seems. Yeah. All right, uh, that's all the questions I have. Uh, uh, I now. Shikhar, you make uh, Dinpuya as the presenter. Uh, Dinpuya as a pre presenter or co host. Otherwise, he'll get, uh, we'll get this problem during the lecture also. Yes, sir. Uh, that's all the questions I have. The co-host uh, or presenter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, let's start uh, the proceedings of uh, day two, and uh, the organizing team uh, may introduce uh, Dr. Lalin Priya formally, and, uh, so that we can start his presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. So the first speaker of today's technical session is. Dr. Laldin Puya, Associate Professor, Center for Disaster Management, Mizoram University, Aizal. He has done a lot of work in the field of landslide studies, especially in Mizoram region. And he has published his uh, research findings in various reputed journals. I welcome you, sir, to deliver the lecture on instrumentation for mitigation and management of landslide risks in Northeast India. Over to you, sir. Dr. Shikhar, it seems your connection is also not stable and uh, Dinpuya's connection is also not stable. Yeah. I am, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I am happy to be here as a resource person to share some of my experience uh, in this webinar. Uh, I hope uh, some of you gain some knowledge from this uh, slide, my presentation. Then my presentation will be instrumentations for mitigations and management of uh, last slide risk in Northeast India. So uh, I may focus uh, on this mitigation part, not much in 
uh, the real management. Anyway, uh, you can have access to some of the, uh, the links I will provide for the management too. Here is the, uh, today my presentation contents. Uh, and you know that uh, Northeastern regions is vulnerable to various disasters, especially earthquake and landslide. And according to the global susceptibility map, Northeastern North Eastern regions falls, all of these falls, in medium to high category class. When you see that Northeastern regions, every state, so you see that. Uh, uh, most of uh, the areas are susceptible to landslide due to terrain condition, you can say that, except the plain areas of the Brahmutra and pirate valleys of some and valley portions of Manipur and Tripura. So uh, you, uh, most of the states uh, affected due to uh, have uh, effect uh, by landslide. So here that management part as already uh, told before, here I give you a and links, landslide and avalanche guidelines prepared by NIDM. It's very good book and good guidelines. Uh, for those uh, participants, please go uh, to these guidelines. It's very useful. And beside this, if you are interested in landslide studies, inventory and others mitigation too, here are the guidelines prepared by GSI and many uh, reports and uh, training also that uh, SOP, including SOP, everything here in the uh, GSI uh, website. That's, uh, it's a very uh, useful website is because.gov.gsi.gov.in. It's a very, very uh, important and very useful website. Please go to this website too. And here, uh, I uh, more introductions. Uh, you know that there is there is is uh, you can say that is a measure of expected load due to a hazard of particular magnitude occurring in a given area uh, over a specific time period. So you can simply put as hazard into potential or of losses risk and mitigation is uh, minimizing the adverse impacts of. Uh, some uh, hazardous limit, uh, hazardous event, or you can say that to limit uh, the adverse impact of uh, hazard. Here, uh, here is that important, uh, uh, very important uh, words here. So try to remember to all uh, this uh, training. And last line mitigation here, you can see that it is not uh, it cannot complete without investigation. So first, you need to investigate uh, the landslide, and thoroughly, then you can find out the uh, type of uh, failure and uh, the factors also. So after investigate thoroughly and investigate uh, uh, study thoroughly, and you can uh, you can put mitigations measure you suggest you can suggest mitigation measures accordingly. So here you see that classification of landslide. Uh, most of, uh, okay, you say that last slides are mostly uh, classified according to type of materials movement. So that, uh, and there are many classifications here, that's a famous one is here. So every type of landslide, uh, type uh, landslide, you observe in Northeastern region. Here in also, Mizoram also, you found, you observe uh, all of these type of movement in Mizoram too, but the common type is translation of slide and followed by rotational type and folds. Here you can see also flows also. And spread, you also observe in measure on June. Now we'll go to recent last line. Here in measure uh, unfortunately, on 11 June uh, night, uh, uh, there is a rainfall of 21 mm. So that the, uh, here you see that as uh, excavated soil from construction uh, houses. So that uh, there is a retaining wall over here. But uh, when you see that uh, uh, the retaining wall construction uh, specification and also the, uh, is not marked up to the marks of specification, there is the road also very close, very small, 
only fix mm so you can see that uh, how strong will be how weak will be and here also you see that excavation show is much uh, very very thick and uh, here here there is uh, 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 in this uh, specific area there is an uncertain type building so that uh, after this uh, continuous rainfall and uh, that uh, can say you can say I cannot uh, say details. So that it failed a lot, fail uh, retaining collapse and this a building and killed four persons uh, at the spot here. Here is the same spot. And uh, another one recently in 13 on 13 June, uh, there is a rock fall here in Isol. Is uh, Isol. Uh, is towards the uh, southern part, uh, the road connects southern part of Mizoram. So that uh, this rock fall uh, cover about 60 meters. It's very uh, with uh, debris over here. You can see that the talas also. So here, uh, last uh, four, four years, maybe, uh, you study thoroughly, the, uh, you study this uh, uh, specific area, then you also design some uh, rock fall uh, nature uh, using rockfall software, and that's you study that uh, based on that uh, geological attitudes. Here you also uh, uh, done uh, dynamic analysis. So to this you can predict uh, some uh, disaster happens and type of uh, failure for using this dynamic analysis. Okay, then go ahead investigation first now. So there are two types of investigation uh, it can be uh, there can be a preliminary type and detailed investigation. And you see that uh, here, so that's I'm not going to detail here, but uh, in detailed investigations, you include that surface deformation like uh, monitoring only extensometer, tilometer, crack meter, the first station, lidar, maybe a photograph, there are many more. And geophysical investigations may include electrical resistivity, seismic method, and etc. Geophysical investigation, including SPT, is very important, a terabyte limit on OMC, etc. RQD, UCS, RMR, SMR, GSI, Q index are very common types of for geotechnical investigation. And hydrological, hydrological investigation is also required. Those that you should know that the rainfall, uh, rainfall uh, um, amount and pore water pressure, groundwater logging. Then after this investigation, the preliminary investigation, you also you should know you should know that you can prepare a landslide hazard zonation map or landslide susceptibility map, and uh, also you go ahead to analyze this part, stability assessment. So to this, you can know that uh, factor of safety accordingly. You can design mitigation measures uh, from this output. And here, investigation I can study uh, last light hazard solutions of ISO prepared by the early time of Dr. Evla Moya in 2013. Like years, you can see that uh, that last light uh, uh, portion you can see in ISO map. And uh, screw you can also you simply use Google Earth map. Here, that's a nice game. Here, that you can study accordingly. And surface study may include this. Uh, uh, Brampton compass measuring attitude and situ uh, compressive strength, and we may also use this resistive meter for this uh, for some specific area. Okay, and there are many more. And here the case study I put here is uh, a famous rockfall in the rural area. It's a nice hill. Here you can see that uh, every year that we uh, face many problems uh, in this road. Disconnect southern part of Mizoram. So uh, when you try to study this type of rockfall, yes, it's the, sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes you use the drone, and sometimes uh, you uh, ask adventure club uh, for this, like climbing, uh, climbing, and they study uh, on behalf. So before they're climbing, you teach them how to use Brandon compass, how to use Smith Hammer like that. Then uh, they can study. Uh, on behalf of uh, this light doors, they climb. Here also they climb uh, in the hill of, uh, in the hilly. It's just really difficult to assess the correct uh, geological attitude. But 
uh, when you study, uh, when you have a, a data, then you can prepare dynamic analysis, slope stability analysis, rough form analysis. That's a very useful tool. And investigation may include monitoring and early warning system. This very simple techniques are using the uh, southernmost part of Mizoram in Siaha district. So that you uh, also uh, published paper in 2015. Yes, very simple, but very useful. Using this movement, uh, rate of movement measurement, so you have an uh, issue, some uh, early warning system for the locality level. So they uh, they allocate their dwelling houses, then uh, they are safe, you can say simply. So that's very useful, like uh, this type of very, uh, very simple technique you employ here in southern part of Mishram. Uh, it's difficult to get uh, some technical, uh, some uh, sophisticated instruments to install here. And here also you can, <laughs> I also measure like this also very uh, sometimes it's very useful uh, here you can also see that uh, sometimes I paste a uh, paper then you check it uh, like that if, uh, you can see that it's also effect when rainfall is more that it uh, that it, you will see that uh, the, the, uh, the output of this uh, monitoring simple monitoring here but uh, I also employed uh, tape extend uh, uh, meter uh, uh, here it's very really useful for measuring the rate of movement and borehole extensometer also very really useful in monitoring the landslide and here is the height meter and you see that uh, there is tape extensometer again and sometimes use total station for monitoring the rate of movement of this subsidence area. And like uh, this though, I love this uh, instrument use uh, this, uh, using this instrument, you can measure the uh, up to 300 meters. Then uh, again, resist the vitimeter. And here is also a good instrument here, uh, digital inclinometers and all very useful for investigation. And here again, case study. Um, repeat motion meter is very useful and for cutter machine for color sampling and borehole to know that uh, RQ value. But uh, in every uh, study site, you cannot get a borehole that uh, instead you use the, the Pound-Strong formula RQD equal to 115 minus 3.3 into number of joints per unit volume of rock mass. It's a very, very useful formula. And here you see that rock mass rating value of Nigel again. Here that you see that the total, uh, total score is uh, more than 500. It indicates it needs to are changed. Uh, that's the rock quality is bad. You can see that. And those uh, strength index also indicate very blocky and blocky nature so myself likewise you can have done analysis and and uh, analysis may be two types soil and rock type the soil including lm analysis mostly i employ this one uh, here you can see that uh, from analysis lm analysis and uh, deterministic method determine the factor of safety uh, here on uh, uh, and another one here uh, this maybe looks different but it's same software slightly uh, updated version here i i would like to present here because i employ resistive intimeter for uh, Geometry of this uh, specific region. So very useful. Uh, I employ uh, that geometry uh, plays an uh, important role for uh, uh, analysis. Uh, so that uh, if I use this uh, borehole uh, data, so you know that data, uh, the strata behavior, and the uh, the thickness of uh, some specific row. So that uh, can I can do accordingly, uh, then like it's very smooth. 
uh, uh, smooth uh, geometry you have. Then determine factor of safety again. And analysis also, maybe in rock, in case of rock, you may be FEM method and you that uh, software you can use. Many softwares are there and kinematic analysis also you uh, can done here in that our present uh, paper present uh, uh, published in 2019. Here also that uh, that's a lamp with airport road. Then you can uh, analyze the, uh, the stage and everything nature accordingly, then you can uh, have a trajectories, then you can so, uh, put some preventive measures. Here, the very important point again is class of rock strength. And that slight, uh, sliding surface along this continuity, if it's yes, and you can go ahead this uh, this continuity shear strength. And if it's no, and put the, uh, you use this pattern rock mass shear strength. And mitigation system. Mitigation system is, you can say that there are two types, uh, to increase the resisting force or to reduce the driving force. So the increase of resisting force may be input, but uh, construction of buttressing and retaining structure, and maybe so slope and well reinforcement, nailing, maybe anchoring or micropiling, and surface low protection may be soft feet, stock pitching, gabion oil, machinery oil, RC oil, rape, and bioengineering engineering measures also. And you can also reduce the timing force. Uh, and unloading that excavation uh, is most common is benching type and drainage system, that surface drainage maybe, and subsurface drainage maybe. So that uh, these two uh, are very important to increase the resistance force or reduce the driving force. All these uh, mitigation part. This is the system only. And in case of rock form mitigations, it may be uh, to restore bounds, maybe dents, rock sets, chapray or barrier. Here I is, I'd like to say that a bit about it. When you have done a rock fall hazard rating system, uh, the display important role because that you will see that the trajectory is then. It can uh, get the rock uh, fragments, and that likewise, uh, it can uh, you can prevent uh, some disaster. Here, uh, I suggest uh, readings, translate investigation communications, and IRC. These are important uh, good regarding mitigations. And now go to a case study. Here is uh, you see the place is in Isol again. This is a bypass road of Mizoram University. Here you investigate uh, thoroughly the area, false curve and everything. And you have also done deterministic method of uh, you know, analysis and calculate all factor of safety. So uh, you have, uh, I've met PWD engineer in, the, in their office. Then you design the retaining wall uh, accordingly. Then, uh, Fortunately, luckily, you can say that uh, the, this uh, last slide now, uh, the no more last slide I share. Uh, but uh, you cannot say uh, future. Uh, then uh, beyond this uh, uh, re retaining wall, uh, visitation covering also there. So that's part uh, done by some of my colleagues. And here another one, Rambo Sport Complex. This one is uh, maybe the first national last time risk mitigation project under NDMA. It's a very uh, important uh, area regarding uh, landslide study because very interesting, very, very interesting uh, things are there. But I know the uh, lecture uh, not uh, say details. Here, you also find out the factor of safety again, and uh, this uh, and determine that soil nature is everything and CBR, including CBR value. But CBR value is less than 10, so uh, it says the not payment is not uh, maybe good for this uh, mitigation part. But uh, I cannot say 
uh, NDMA uh, and GSI, people suggest uh, payment too. So, uh, but uh, this study may be neglected sometimes. I already submit to the department uh, that I can mention, but I can say beyond this. Here you have reviewed the mitigations along with NDMA. Here another case study in Siaha district and uh, Siaha town, southern part of Mizoram. In, uh, investigate uh, investigations done first, then mitigations along with mitigations. Then you have uh, construct check them here uh, to to strengthen resisting force, and here also they construct uh, some uh, retaining wall. But unfortunately, some uh, construction uh, contractors might be uh, that's not good now. Uh, anyway, so NDMA, they, uh, the government submit another project to NDMA. And another case study here in uh, National Highway, along the National Highway 54, Airport Road, you can simply say that. So here, that's a big long slide over here due to topic factors, uh, about the cut slope, due to the cut slope, improper cut slope. Here, that's the study thoroughly, then, then uh, deterministic method of uh, uh, analysis to find out factor of safety. Then the factor of safety is to load that uh, design uh, big uh, mitigation succession measures so that uh, uh, benching is done and retaining all is done and rest is not done yet. Done by uh, PWD. And here you see that a very famous last line in Mizoram is a Hunter area. So I start uh, this study in 2006. So in 2006, there is a house here. Uh, and I saw, used to collect some soil samples from here uh, in those eight days. But in 2015, there is a movement here above the uh, highway. Uh, in before 2015, a movement only in uh, up to this highway only. But after 2015, the movement increased towards the upward. So that you can see that the uh, Red, red dotted line here, you, must, uh, uh, you can see that difference. So here it's all gone. And in 2006, uh, in 2020, uh, I mean 2020, okay, here yeah, that uh, it extended up to the upwards again. All of these are affected now. It's very difficult to control. Here you can see that the chisel chili shape of uh, type to save of landslide over here in uh, winter area. Here, mitigation is done uh, based uh, from NDMA. As you can see, our GeoSpar, uh, PWD, you can say PWD and DMR, disaster management. Here, the uh, micropining is done and some draining. Uh, Gene system also done in the to uh, in the side northern part and southern part of that area. Here you can see that uh, what is going on. Yes, I took this photo on last Friday only, and here also you can see that the seepage uh, is there. Here the problem is the big problem is um, um, water, and you see that the, the thick alluvium here. And here, I would like to say that this weepole, weepole is very important in retaining wall, but here the weepole, uh, you can see that weepole is, direction is towards this upward. I think yes, the weepole is towards the uh, downwards, it's maybe working. So you can see that the ship is over, uh, over the retaining wall. Here is very interesting. Uh, here you see that uh, resistivity meter uh, data 
So uh, you have John only in on last week only. So here you do you know that the strata now. So based on the strata, uh, my question is micropiling is working or not? If this data is like that, if all of this you see that soft rocks up to uh, up to thirty three depth. So uh, let me let us see again. Micropiling is working or not? The question is like that, and uh, till then ship is there, and there is a um, groundwater table is uh, uh, also high. So uh, you, you don't know uh, what uh, what will be the future. That's why you have monitoring uh, before that uh, they are doing. So uh, using these control stations and depth extensometer. So you see that uh, the uh, the rate of movement is still is going on here. Right. So uh, that but uh, it's difficult to say. Uh, other suggest uh, is difficult to suggest other mitigation measure because that is already work done by NDMA and suggested by some expert people from New Delhi. So I at this time it is very difficult to say some other measures. But well, here is my uh, my suggestion already is that before that mitigation is going on, you need to dewatering system. But the ordering system is not much done in the case. That uh, the problem you will see that's extended over to the upwards. And in 2017, you see that debris flow. That means the alluvium very cheap. And now uh, for the last point, broad practice, Australian geomechanical. Uh, geo Geomechanics Society prepared this one. So these are uh, bad practice done in some of the hill areas. I think you can see this. And the good practice over here. And it should be retaining wall. I like to add this retaining wall because that's very problem here in Mizoram too. The retaining wall should be like base, which is equal to Height divided by six plus 0.45. This is slightly different from uh, IRC specification. This specification is prepared by PWD for hilly terrain. Okay, this is very important. This should be follow. You should be follow this type of formula for construction of retaining wall. And Good practice prepared by NDMA, uh, prepared by the Dr. Surya Prakas, is very, very important. Here, a uh, column should up to the deep foundation, and the engineering to retaining wall should be done, and there is uh, some preventive measure to be done like that. So that here, I give you a link again, DPR for mitigation purposes, DPR template can be done from NDMA website. So you can go ahead for to prepare DPMR if required. And here you see some instrument I use, uh, total stations, the, uh, like a distal, S910, and sometimes drone. And here is very important tool, this uh, binocular, a binocular, a gold binocular. So using this uh, binocular, you can see the height easily. So uh, with this word, thank you, hello. Me. Thank you, sir, for your informative presentation. And uh, now the program is open for discussion. And all the participants are requested to put their queries through the chat box, or you can put your question through the YouTube chat. I request Dr. Seeker yeah. to highlight the question. 
okay sir uh yeah it was very uh, good uh, presentation given by dimpoya and um, uh, how to adopt to the methods which are already being applied in the field for a specific site specific thing is very good example uh, given through dr lalpuya yeah dr shikhar what you want to say you are not supposed to Sir, uh, to say in short because he has given in, he has already given in in full so why you want to say something more about his lecture you can have the lecture, the question and answer and all those things are okay if you have got any question dr shikhar you are most welcome yes sir uh, i have a question on the youtube yeah. chat uh, uh, abhinit kodayar has yeah. asked this question so i'm going to read that question uh, yeah what please. are the landslide mitigation methods for highly earth and stone or mud stone deep lying over burden strata extending in large slant lengths also please suggest methods if it is lying in high seepage zones so then because my voice was clear shall i repeat uh, not clear okay. let me let me read read again abhijit kodayal has asked in the chat box so uh, sure sir it. Sure, sir. I'm yeah. putting it and in the same time well. you can keep on reading also. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, so with the... with regard to to the query, uh, Doctor Din uh, Dinpuya, uh, the person wants to know uh, that uh, the there are various different rock types like sandstone mm. uh, dominated, like erinaceous mm. rock types or argillaceous rock types are there. So, what are the various uh, uh, methodologies or technologies so that uh, uh, you are you are able to 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 take care of the the overburden and all and uh, say once there is a uh, whether sandstone is there means it is a loose uh, sandstone mm -hmm. so to say there will be lot of seepage will also be there accompanied with the seepage okay. so what are the specific mitigation methods proposed for such zones a uh, very good question sir so in the case first uh, uh, to re uh, remove the increasing force like uh, to remove the materials uh, like using benzene type maybe excavated first then uh, needs to resisting force to increase Resisting force to increase by means of uh, putting constructing check downs maybe and retaining uh, base well maybe the deliver maybe okay then their revetment well maybe so there are many methods according to uh, the specific areas. It's very difficult to say uh, to say now. Uh, it's in the, like a case study is required. So accordingly, you can suggest. So uh, just to just to wind up in a in a in a in a, in a simple words is that firstly the loose material which is uh, which is with lot of uh, water needs to be excavated first and that way you can you will grade grading of the slope will also take place because it is already large slant area is there and along with the grading <coughs> some of the water with highly uh seeped in water will that material will get removed yeah any other question if you want anybody wants can be taken up now so there is one more question from mr jayanta yeah, jeevan laskar uh, he is yeah. asking how do you suggest mitigation measures uh, from different values of factor of safety of unstable slopes yeah uh, very very yeah, good question yeah. Mm. yeah so uh, most of the software is uh, attaching some uh, medication so uh, while uh, you're preparing analysis you simply put 
medication. Then accordingly, that uh, uh, it show some uh, which uh, medication to be success. Then number two is based on the area. So based on the area means after investigation and monitoring uh, the natures of that specific area, and you simply suggest. Uh, if the factor of safety is low or very low, then need to mitigation suggest, uh, measures to be more. By the way, uh, there are many methods to do uh, here. Based on the experience on them, you can say. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Dimpuya. Just to add up uh, to, uh, to Dr. Lasker's uh, query, uh, basically, calculation of factor of safety is, is of prime importance, without which we are not supposed to propose any mitigation measure. That's what is the first thing, uh, dear participants. And the question is very, very pertinent, very, very relevant to the basic theme of uh, this training program. Because many a times, uh, the mitigation measures are proposed and even, even uh, the, the methods are implemented also without knowing the factor of safety. The factor of safety will also help you in knowing that what are the basic reasons for of that landsliding zone. So it means that is what will only help you in getting the proper mitigation methods. So while implementing, while proposing, or while constructing, taking care of any of the method, the, the factor of safety is very, very important. And accordingly, uh, the methods needs to be taken care of. Thank you, Dr. Lasker, for raising this important query. Thank you. Yeah, any other query? Uh, yes, sir, there's a, another question, a very specific uh, question by Mr. Abhini Kodayal. He's asking if there is a slope with swelling clay material, which method should be adopted for mitigation of the landslide? Yeah. Dr. Dimpuya, were you able to hear the query? Uh, that means uh, groundwater tables may be high. Then first, the dewatering system should be horizontal drain pipe maybe, and subsurface drainage system may be worked. So uh, uh, that's the only. Uh, I always I always say that first it needs to investigation, and then you can say. Yeah, yeah, that's what is very important observation by Dr. Dinpuya with regard to the query raised. The person wanted to know that the clay is there and the clay is swollen also. So the clay has got the property that its permeability is low and porosity is high. So the clay normally swells and it gives the indication that the area may landslide down and normally give rise to flow type of landsliding. So once the area starts getting swollen, it means you need to manage the water and it means the simple kind of mitigation measures may not help you to control or to, to, to resiliate the landslide. So, as rightly pointed out by Dr. Dinpuya, uh, the first investigation to know the reasons for the landslide is very, very important to propose any mitigation measures. Yeah, any other question? Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, there is another question uh, from Mr. Ravir. He's asking uh, for Himalayan rain. Which kind of calculation of factor of safety will be better based on field work or rather or calculated through laboratory work for Himalayan terrain? Yes. Uh, very interesting questions, sir. Again, here that uh, that Himalayan terrain is very fast, at first. So some are uh, very. Uh, rocky natures and jointed natures so in case of jointed uh, mass some, it, sometimes it's very difficult to uh, find out factor of safety otherwise uh, you can also uh, uh, invest, uh, you can also calculate to the laboratory only then 
first you need to first something is important in this case in himalayan terrain if the jointed mass is there you need to something to be careful uh, for invest, uh, investigation for determination of factor safety so that uh, based on that uh, area specific area i for me it's difficult to say as a whole yeah uh, yes sir so there's another question on the youtube uh, it's from golfing star karwani he's asking by using the overlay analysis in arcgis can we find out the landslide prone areas if we can then with how much accuracy may your voice was breaking i also couldn't get it okay i will repeat sir can is my voice clear now Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is asked by Golfin. He's asking if we are using overlay analysis in ArcGIS software, is it possible to find out the landslide landslide prone areas? And if we can, then with how much accuracy? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Is it possible? So true only. You can know that Palio uh, slide. Uh, based on the topography uh, features, so this is very useful tools of GIS. But you need to check. Uh, you, you need to ground check uh, to know the specific characters. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor Dinpuya. We have got. Uh, uh, maybe, 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 maybe the yes, last question. Sharmaji. Ha, Sharmaji ka ek last question yeah. le lete hain, we and then got... we'll go to Professor Chandan Ghosh, who is already joined. Welcome, Ghosh Sir. Yeah, I have seen. I have I have seen him. Uh, so, <laughs> Professor V S Sharma has got very good experience, especially with reference to clay modeling and all. So, I we would like to seek his intervention with regard to the question with reference to clay. Doctor Sharma, sir, please. So, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Valiya Sir, it's only a small issue. I want. I would like to add that uh, there is a good geophysical technique and method. To find out that to sort out the issues of clay, that is resistivity, of course, because we are getting very very low values of clay. Other than this, is IP induced polarization will work very very well, extremely well. So this is what I want to suggest. Thank you, yeah. sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very. Much. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir, for your intervention and uh, reminding us that uh, to know the various properties of the clay, we can use some other geophysical methods. Yes, That's how. By integrating various methods, we can get excellent overview of yes. substratum, yeah. and then we can suggest something. So this method is can be adopted for not only clay but for whatever discussion we had, whatever yes, query we had during this time. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, organizers, please you can go ahead. And as Chandan Ghosh is there, I would like to request Professor Ghosh, welcome to this program, and would like to request you to please. Uh, Switch on your video so that we can uh, we can we can get uh, not only listen to your voice but see your face also and get uh, face dikh raha na? Uh, boosted with our with our morale with our uh, setup. Yeah. Valiya, ji, sirf ek word kena tha, Darshana Bhullashi. Yeah, Darshana. Yeah. So yes, in the meantime, uh, organizers can take forward. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, uh, I would like to request Professor Sandan Ghosh, National Institute of Disaster Management, New Delhi. He has joined NIDM in July 2006 as Professor and Head, Resilient in Infrastructure Division. He did his postdoctoral research in Japan. He works in the areas of earthquake geotechnology, reinforced art, seismic microzonation, ground improvement techniques, geosynthetics, and bioengineering measures for sustainable developments. He has devoted more than 30 years of his career in undergraduate and postgraduate teaching research guidance, development and teaching tools, and training module for engineers, architects, town planners. He has published more than 135 papers in reputed journals, conference proceedings. 
as recognition to his seminal contributions he has received leonard prize for the best doctoral thesis in the year 1993 cidc viswakarma awards in the year 2013 igs sri ac verma golden jubilee award in the year 2013 and lifetime achievement award in the year 2019 I welcome you, sir, to deliver the lecture on the landslide risks in Northeast India and its mitigation and management using green techniques. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, there is uh, very very welcome, uh, ma'am, and also uh, Dr. Devesh Walia ji. for taking uh, or spearheading this uh, program with an idm and dr amir ali khan uh, for uh, taking up uh, this uh, program so uh, so in that way uh, the landslide has been a big issue uh, but uh, at the same time yes uh, nature has given some solution the point of that i am going to discuss uh, today it is specially Uh, about the landslides uh, that which uh, are causing us so much but what are the nature based solution is there that i want to uh, look into and with some example and also the kind of uh, situation that we have been facing uh, throughout the country that how uh, this can be mitigated or comprehended and Uh, using some of the green solution so let me share a few slides regarding this i think screen okay okay screen is coming yes sir okay so i start with uh, as how much time is there 15 20 minutes 20 20 yeah. minutes and uh, 10 minutes discussion sir okay okay so landslide mitigation uh, by bioengineering uh, all these three words are somehow landslide happens um, mitigation of the landslide and and then the word that which is bioengineering all three are somehow um, not incongruent uh, words being added by the by the word by and uh, because we know science and we know so much of science about the landslide that which have been happening we have tons of research paper and findings and database and uh, landslide database in the country several landslides showing them in uh, in google earth or maintaining a huge database uh, in the server and 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 then showing that uh, those numbers in the gis map or web website we have so much database we have done this research we have done this publication we have done this and we have got this instrument we have got that instrument we have got sir uh, in inferometry or we have got early warning what not there may be 50 or 70 uh, different ways that uh, like a blind uh, people that uh, encompassing a, a big elephant and checking it by the rope or checking it by uh, whatever way by it tail or hand or leg or whatever by its own body and this is what is the whole scenario of the landslide uh, that which has come to some people as a god's gift to some people it is that it is man made or created uh, and then to some people that which can be uh, that solved by simply putting a retaining wall especially those scientific brand of people that who uh, often say that a retaining wall solves a problem and a retaining wall if it is provided then it is solved here i bring or rather this presentation i want to bring certain kind of uh, 
ifs and buts and how simple it is to solve many of the gigantic uh, landslide problem mostly created by man-made activities wherever uh, that we go. So any amount of scientific data, background, and anthropogenic study, historical occurrence, and 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 making software and making website and showing them as a dot on the Google Earth or even in ArcGIS or ArcInfo is uh, and uh, all these are bits of bytes of information, but they are not conjoined. Otherwise, we would not have been uh, spending so much or talking so much or would not have arranged such kind of interaction sessions. So uh, the first thing is uh, that I'm not going to any definition or anything, which you already know. The moment we know about the crop signs, the moment we have come about the genome or genes and human genes, crop genes, animal genes, the moment we shelved them in our laboratory as a various kind of spice to cook something, and to many people, to many of us, we now understand that uh, how much motivated even the current corona scheme also, which is going on across the globe. So the moment we have come to know about the disease uh, class, a disease, that, whether it is virus or bacteria related disease, the moment we came to know about that, how big unnaturally rather using our genomic science and botany and their study, the group of uh, this area that we can make not that once uh, such, we can make an entire uh, tree filled up with banana, which is not natural, but we have made it in the name of you know, modifications that we do in our laboratory, the science that it has projected ourselves to make, it's, uh, genetically modified food or fruits, what you are saying. The day that we have understood this importance of making or multiplying uh, such kind of uh, uh, that fruits that we are getting in multiple items and then preserving them, sending it from east to west or west to south, or even exporting them for the use of preservative, then comes, then comes that what is that uh, the one bioengineering. We know the science behind this. We know how to match with the genes and which portion is to be separated out. We also know that how to extract the items or uh, what are the uh, what are the extraction that we make to make into various kind of pharmaceutical use from the various crops, various medicinal plants or various kind of animals testing on them. So it is a really mad world to play with all this information that we are keeping in our laboratory at various temperature and at various condition. But what nature has given to us and how our craft people have made into the uh, into this kind of artistry, let us go into that. This is uh, one such application uh, made on uh, uh, December 2019 at Kurk in Karnataka, uh, where I was there, I was present along with the community people and see the slope and see the building, which is still standing at that time, but anytime it may start coming down. But at this moment, then people started planting the vertiver, which you can see this, these are the vertiver or grass that about which I'm going to tell. And also, since uh, simply planting butiver grass is not enough because slope is muddy, soft, and it was December in the month because there it rains uh, throughout the year almost. And anytime it rains, then this will stay out. But what is the engineering or rather, uh, uh, what is the common sense that uh, we have taken 
because before going here, we didn't know that what is the site condition. So it is almost 75, 80 degrees slow. Standing is not possible. So we have arranged for a flexible ladder made of the roof, uh, rope. And going here, these people are working. Many of us who are standing and looking over there, uh, more than 100 people were there. So we have put some kind of nails inside to get extra safety. Nails. The nails are not that this much of nail. Nails are made of wooden branches, which is nearby. Cut them, make into pieces like this. A bamboo was not available. So push them inside manually to some extent so that by, uh, uh, by our uh, own feeling, it looks like that whatever soil that which is about to uh, come down or uh, erosion takes place, at least they should remain to some extent for a mental satisfaction inside we kill this grass grow there and this grass till this grass grow there we wanted to have a mental satisfaction using common sense putting some kind of uh, wood, uh, wooden branch small enough maybe two centimeter three centimeter whatever that shape that we have got we have pushed them inside just by uh, putting them then on in may same area within six months of time and this is the uh, grass that which has grown over and as on date may 2020 december and as of now in this building nothing has happened so uh, i'm not going to say that as, as i have been there and it has been successful it is not like that the material that which is being used, that photo itself gives enough indication. We don't have to go into and study the genomic study over here. They have grown over here and they have given a mental satisfaction as well as satisfaction to the owner that a reliability on a things that for which we do not know ABCD of their roots, how much that it has gone, but many other applications which i am going to show you that will convince that let us unlearn that whatever science that we knew about the grass or about the botany or about the agriculture or whatever it is let us take the problem and find out appropriate solution which will be reliable and which can be replicable in other similar area with the guarantee or with the warranty with the opportunity to solve as well as to to remove the perils of erosion and landslide that which is the main subject matter we do not know any of the mechanics of these things that how this much stands over here ice mechanics these people know but we do not know the science behind it so we cannot explain that we also do not know what is happening inside that how things come down. These are all nature made. And what are the kind of uh, that uh, is called karst terrain or something that whatever changes is happening, it is not in our hands. So we may see some of this from top. If we see it is anthropogenically that it is coming down because the river is there. But seeing this through satellite, taking photograph will not explain that what actually is going on. So this is where just when I started my speech that rejecting or unlearning that what we know, it is not to be taken literally like that. We have to know the basics behind that. That is where the science stands. And that is, that is where that geology, geomorphology, geotechnology, all have to, hydrology, all have to work together to know the reason and source of such kind of depression that which is seen over here, which is due to uh, something that which is underground. And that is where that we have to work together. So there are many such features are there. So uh, anyway, I want to make uh, something like that, the way that we take our sometime engineering marbles when engineering what was not there made in 1880s, this Nulla Periyar Dam, more than 120 
uh, years of age that uh, it was uh, made, but now it is giving a very, very satisfying service. But because it is 100 plus years of old, so the neighboring state, this is in Kerala, neighboring state, they wanted that to store more water or to increase its height so that they can store more water. Otherwise, this extra water is to be released because they can, it, it is not having that much capacity to store the entire water. So they have to release. There are some gates that release the water. Every dam structure is having. And so, but there was a tug of war between to the states that finally Supreme Court has to establish uh, expert body to check that whether dam is able, whether it is ethically right Engineering is all right or not, but engineering is for namesake, but team has visited there, seeing the tug of war between two neighboring states and various issues and non-scientific issues and non-technical issues, which never got into the into this, whether the dam is really fit enough to check under water that how much water it will take or whether it is life really ended because it is 100 plus or simply by tagging it that already 100 years is there. So we cannot do that. We do not believe in all these things. We have to go into the entire structure and surroundings and then check that whether it is healthy enough. This is where that we do not have enough expertise. So whether it is a landslide study, which is being shown over here, or whether it is a dam study, after construction is done, we leave it to the God or whoever it is to the nature and then we do not have, we have the instrument, but we need a mindset to look into the health and performance. If water level is increased or if it is decreased, to what extent that it is able to retain the water and manage maybe or predict project that the dam can be serviceable for another 50 years or 100 years. So this is the kind of uh, know-how that with various instrumentations that uh, various country, including our country, we are looking into to check the health of this structure rather than uh, making it, there are, there are many such safety systems and anything are there, uh, but uh, we do not do much. Rather, we make such kind of campaign by these people who have no sense or nothing about uh, that uh, structure, but they make the and then stop it from going anywhere because the tug of war is so heightened. But it is a, I know it is an irrelevant issue, but my point of that, how we take science into the real study and what is our interest and how we should interpret how much weight is, is to be given on the science and research. And it is Obviously that we have to give a lot of, lot of weightage on that so that we are able to know the real behavior. So uh, Chamoli even that has happened over here uh, and uh, from here, then 22 kilometers that it has happened on February 7th, it is un not unknown to any, and we didn't have any kind of uh, warning system as on date, but various scientific agencies are involved there to establish so that if similar events happen like these, then we shall be able to know. But still, we do not know how long time it will take till or maybe another one that when it is going to happen. But there are many such uh, advancement has been made. Yes. So, uh -huh. in this case, uh, what uh, I would say that uh, in the Meghalaya is a uh, prone to earthquake and uh, what if one earthquake of 1897 or recently uh, earthquake that happened in Assam in the, about 100 kilometer north uh, east of that. So that earthquake uh, uh, of course created liquefaction and many things that happened. But how much design that we are going to, uh, how much that after effect of an earthquake uh, we are taking into it is completely a uh, domain that uh, is not coming under the purview of uh, landslide mitigation and landslide mitigation, it is not possible also. So, uh, but I'm also showing, this is a site that I visited more than 10 years back uh, in Meghalaya, I think Badarpur area, 
this was the condition, this is the main link towards the other states from Meghalaya to other states, uh, uh, Manipur and uh, Ketura, Mizoram and all those things. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, but this was the situation before, and this is the thing that happening and erosion that taking place and everything. And this is a structure which is still existent. You know that they have made at the cost of 25 crores, about 30 meter over here. And now uh, we say that uh, by making this kind of tunnel and this kind of heavy structure over there, what are roads organization who was in charge at that time? Um, they have made for the first time a tunnel at the Sunapur area. Uh, that, but only thing is that spending 25 crore, 25 years back, and making such a mega structure over here, there is nobody to say something about our border roads organization. That why you are spending so much. But satisfaction is that the recurrence uh, thing of landslide has been stopped over here. Recurrence thing of landslide has been stopped over here, but with a heavy cost, with a heavy measures, which has to be checked now with the context that I'm going to show in another four to five minutes. Just only a few slides I want to show that, see that how landslides can be checked by providing a perforated drain inclined plane, which you can see. Nothing else is required. Only whenever it is raining, only this perforated pipe, they are able to drain out the water which you see. Uh, we do not need any such kind of measures. We do not need any kind of measure. So we have to comprehend really that what simple measure or little uh, hard measures or soft measures, bioengineering measures, or this kind of measures is enough to check the virulency or vulnerability of landslide that which we are nurturing in our hill road just because we do not take such kind of simple simply implementable local measures. Now this pipe are not required, now geotextiles are being used to, as a substitute to this, which is flexible and they can act also as a checking the erosion and many other purpose that, and also as a reinforcement and solving. <coughs> a similar situation is being shown here. Yeah, these are exposed. Why not put geotextile drain in fine in this manner, at least if let us not make retaining wall, or even if retaining wall is made, make it not that big height which is required up to this. Make up to here something, not retaining wall, even breast wall we call brick wall. <coughs> These are the kind of nonsense construction that we are doing with our hills. See that retaining wall size, see that retaining wall. See the culvert, cross drainage culvert. And also see that there are many roads you can see in Meghalaya that river is crossing, water is flowing. We just cut the hill, put it here. Now Supreme Court has come in, National Green Tribunal has come in to, to have a, some sequential way of cutting the hills and putting the debris at some designated site. But majority of the cases, we make a foul play by putting all these things into the river, then river carries them, and then with silt, and then road that we make after one year, two years or something, they start eroding and other things. So these are the ideal place for the grass to grow, rather than Supreme Court or National Green Table come, uh, come in. These are not the right way of construction to make a retaining wall. Here simply we can replace them by grass. These are not the such kind of heavy concrete, such tunnels that we are going to use just for to facilitate drainage. Here we can put geotextile wrap around with sand or rubble or something like that. So these are the kind of things we are doing, but this is the actual thing to be done on the road, which is more reliable, not this one. So this is what is done, uh, is doing, I think I am exceeding time, but uh, this is what the grass that which I have shown that made of uh, with, a, with a photograph of uh, our gods, but this is what guards, grass that they have been doing using this one, using this one and various use and purpose and applications there. So, uh, and see that this much they can grow. 
this much that they can grow. You see, 10 feet or 12 feet like that it can grow. I am growing on my rooftop garden also. And this is the this is what that it makes a difference. This is with the grass. This is without grass. So we make our road embankment like this, and they are eroded away. But if you make the grass, especially vertical grass, they will not only make uh, maintain a steep slope, but also erosion also stop for the lifetime because they are perennial. So uh, something like this. Uh, this is of course this photograph is taken from Shillong Road, uh, Guwahati Shillong Road. You see that grass which was not rightly selected over here. This was the again photograph of that. Here grass has been taken with some contract by National Highway Authority. But these are not the right selection of the grass. I think Professor Devesh Walia knows that once we have visited together to see this grass that we are going towards uh, together. But these are not the right selection of the. There are hundred varieties of this grass, but the one that which grows this much, that is very minimal, and it, you have to check it after application and where these sources is available in our country. So these are various such work that has been done. Here we don't need such kind of concrete retaining wall in Tripura when I visited before Corona. This is not required. This can be simply done. This is the work done in Assam only, your neighboring state, with simple breast wall, with we pole and everything. And these are all being done by whatever grass. Okay. And this is the previous condition, erosion, river, and this is where grass is being grown. So you can see the difference. These are the previous condition. These are the way they are taking place. This is the condition where we can grow the grass. This is in other country. And this is, of course, these are the real way that surgery, like uh, Japan did with, uh, with nails inside to to, to check uh, a hill from sloping inside, but it cost a very heavy, heavy cost compared to the grass. This is not the way to be done. So this is a modern technique of putting retaining wall. This is a soil nailed wall and wall thickness because the more load you are adding, more destability, uh, stability, instability that you are getting. So these are the soil, but this is again costly and we have to select. So anyway, uh, these are various applications in other country. There are there are thousands of such applications which is being solved by grass. Okay, this is in uh, you know uh, water roads applied, but they applied it to fail it to Hima, Nagaland. They applied it. They didn't give any water. So this is what I want to. They fail also not because that they fail. They are wrong. They have to be watered for first 15, 20 days. Or rather, if you plant it during rainy season uh, with proper protection for erosion, then you don't need to give any water. This is what that bridge apartment they have. Anyway, we can grow grass even by throwing them the seeds with the mixture also by hydro seeding. This is a technique that which is known for the last 10 years. So we can also make greenery by putting the appropriate kind of seeds and mixing it and throw them. And like this, like this. Okay, I think I have exceeded time. We can grow grass wherever we want, whether it is ballast or anything. So there are certain kind of. This is what that I was telling. Geotextile filter drain, which can be made as a substitute, uh, as a cross drainage things which remain functional for lifetime, which remain functional rather than putting that I have shown, which is in the Jammu area that such a concrete uh, culvert that that can be replaced by this one. Or these are the way that we have to take, and this is completely made of whatever grass. This is completely made or stabilized by material. So you can think in the entire Northeast or Meghalaya or those who are, you can please uh, check these. These are the real application. These are not morphed or video or photographed uh, uh, something like that. And this is the way that it can solve many of the problem and research start from let research start from here now onwards checking and finding out similar situations where this can make a wonderful combination of the hard measures and soft measures and green measures thank you thank you sir thank you professor for... yeah.
Yeah, please. Okay. Thank you, sir, for yeah. very informative and excellent presentation. You have well explained about the nature-based solution for landslide mitigation. And we are grateful for the time and effort you took to share your thoughts and experiences with us. Now the program is open for discussion. And uh, I request Professor Ghosh to uh, tell slightly about the, uh, uh, that the byproducts of uh, this, these techniques to enhance the livelihood options as well. Yeah, the first photograph that I have shown, I think I have uh, later on, I have in this slide, what are the, you can make uh, Jutra Chappal Agara Bohut Kis Banate Hain. And moreover, it is that upper portion of the grass is being used as a uh, mulch, a mulch. Mulch means when you have got the main crop and you don't want that any, uh, any kind of grass parasites grow in the main crop of say begun hai, tomato hai and whatever is the open area you can use as a mulch there uh, so that it will not allow any other things to grow there to support and you can also grow this grass with any of the crop variety because this grass when it, it gets the root then it takes its own food from the moisture and everything it takes from the atmosphere it doesn't need any water i can show you in the in my rooftop which has got this much of uh, uh, soil is there. First one month I gave water. Now it doesn't need any water and it, it has grown like this. And it doesn't need any water now because whatever water it requires, it takes from the atmosphere. This is the beauty. Even in some places like in a, uh, when you grow, like we have in Meghalaya also while I was going, uh, Shilam, there was, uh, you have, you often make some systematic way, uh, burning of the uh, burning. Uh, so that forest yeah. firing, controlled firing is uh, So you can have a buffer. You can use this particular grass as a buffer. And so in British Jamana, you, they used to use the, there are buffer they have defined in forest area in Himachal or Uttarakhand. But now this vertical grass, you can use the rows of vertical grass in the forest area because they do not need any water. You have enough rainfall. You don't need any water, only initial one week or 10 days, if it can grow, then this will also burn along with the fire. But when it is green and it will grow on its own, you don't have to regrow there because roots are inside. And because, and so in that case, there are many examples are there. It has worked very well as a forest buffer and ensuring greenery again, regreening. Of course, nature gives the greenery every any season, it happens. And also it has got tremendous profitable use, use of vertical grass in the vertical oil production. In fact, one is disaster mitigation, another is oil. Uh, it gives, according to CI map Bangalore, it gives 0.5 to 1.5% yield as a vertical oil. Market price, if you see the Google, it is, 50,000 to 70,000 per liter. And one such slip, which is, you can see in India Mart, 40 paisa, you can get 40 paisa to 50 paisa, one slip. Or you can get it anytime, 20 lakh, 30 lakh, 50 lakh of these things within 24 hours by car or by, by lorry or everything. So if one such slip can grow into 50 kg to 100 kg in one year of time, and it covers an area of two feet by two feet. So in two feet by two feet of the area of a land, if it is producing 50 kg, 50 kg is giving 0.5 liter of oil after processing, market price is 40,000, means 20,000. So you can see that livelihood and international export share of India is not even 2% of the international requirement in oil supply, which we are not focusing in that. So in every village area, in the livelihood area, if we take the special variety recently developed by CI map scientists, which gives 1.5% yield, if we only take this one through our various program at village to village, we can give a very strong economy to our people. Uh, and, uh, and 
Professor Ghosh, how much hmm. time does it take to produce? Uh, one one year, one year, maximum. Six and months. How much to area? One year. How much area? One slip will grow into maximum two feet by two feet, like like small table size area it will take. But like by chair, the chair that I'm sitting over here is maybe maximum two feet by two feet you can keep it. So two feet by two feet means one square, uh, 1.5 or whatever. What the Ithanasa square area hai. So in this area, mein, it grows, it doesn't move here and there. Only thing is that it is to be extracted, it is to be processed, it is to be cleaned, and oil extraction technology is known everywhere in the country. So we can motivate our people to extract the oil only that will give a tangible benefit within a year, which no other crop can give. Uh, so much impact into the economy as well as livelihood. This is other than disaster management, but the kind of wonders that it is doing in landslide mitigation, erosion control, and also uh, growth of vegetation, and also giving nutrition to the soil, and also disinfectant. If roots is used in a plain water and drink it, it is a disinfectant role. It is a huge domain of research that which we have not done anything in our country, even though it is originated in our country, thousands of years back. Uh, and what are the limitations? Are... What are the limitations of these techniques? Uh, it has only uh, limitation. You can say it uh, if you plan uh, these things uh, in the house or nearby in the park, it will not allow any mosquito to grow or any snakes to come inside. Okay. Like Chalmers uh, will not be around. So, Other is that, that limitation is... Uh, really limitation? <laughs> limitation is it is it can grow minus 15 degree to plus 50 degree temperature. And pH, it can grow pH 3 to pH 11. Oh. And it can remain Marvelous. under water for three months. Yeah. And it will survive. So it is used yeah. as a uh, even uh, canal liner or uh, river lining, even though it is under water for three months. Now I have recommended these things for bridge, like many of the bridges in the river, 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 uh, river. No, they get eroded, yeah. and so their foundation gets recently in Jharkhand. It has happened. So if we use this or bridge apartment, if we put this thing rather than making a big retaining wall. This one can stop erosion and scouring in yeah. the bridge pier and around. So we don't need to spend and make an apron and hard apron and other things. We don't have to. Even in Sundarban now, we have recommended these things where many of the embankments are blown away by the storm surge due to years. But these are going to be flexible and it is also stopping erosion. And it is also in the uh, in the river also. You can increase the river navigation capacity. Only thing is, uh, uh, I would say that I did wrong because like failure cases I have shown in the case of Kohima, because it is limitation is it doesn't cost anything. That is yeah, why we are splendid. Present. Yeah, excellent, uh, excellent lecture. So, dear and, friends, and uh, we all know we all maybe, know that maybe. Professor Ghosh is a is engineer and he is proposing to go green. Whereas engineers, they go for uh, heavy infrastructure to for for various reasons. Whereas if we'll go green, we'll get a lot of benefits. So that's what we need to choose the best possible uh, method of level so that irrespective of uh, uh, various limitations and various uh, issues. Any other question, if it is there, it is most welcome because in the morning we have got a uh, good presentation, excellent presentation by Dr. Laldan Puya. And now by Professor Chandan Ghosh. So we would like to get some queries so that it can be resolved in their presence. And uh, maybe last question from my side, to Professor Ghosh. Uh, yeah, please. And and it is uh, does it uh, attract the rodents and uh, uh, especially if, uh, like uh, they they have their uh, holes uh, and uh, seepage uh, can can lead to collapse of uh, say embankments as you were mentioning. Uh, no, rodents like uh, generally uh, rodents uh, because of the smell. 
because of the smell either the snake or mosquito or other things they cannot come no like chua and uh, other yeah. other insects uh, chua cannot cut them because the root which you have seen they get totally exhausted while cutting through this so if your main crop of the field if you want to stop rodents to enter into that just make a hatch by whatever grass so they have to go through this ek to smell usko aane nahi dega second thing is if they are making a holes they cannot cut through this uh, this grasses because of the smell they just leave it they find some other way to enter into the so uh, wherever whatever grass is there or it is protected there no rodents will come there are few examples only but we can see and check uh, after applying this but it is used as a mulch or it is used in, in addition to the main field where they give nutrition to the main crop they do not eat up they are not parasite that is also checked agricultural field that they are beneficial to the existing main plant and they can grow anywhere like ph3 to 11 minus 15 to 50 degree and they can grow in the coastal area they can grow anywhere so that makes it really acceptable and nature has designed this one in such a way that it is a perennial it doesn't it doesn't get uh, you know uh, dry up in the in the winter season or there is nothing like that so it is called perennial tree it is always green evergreen so yeah. nature has given these things this adaptation to this plant in such a way that uh, this is such a wonderful gift to the mankind that we are yet to recognize but 100 country has taken from us they are using it so this flowers also this uh, no, whatever no. flower variety is there so there are 100 variety those which are flower variety it is not in flower variety there are certain kind of flowers come but they yeah. work actually their work is defined by certain scientists that they are not as if we have to see that where we are using it so if we want uh, root variety oil variety then we have to choose oil variety has got smaller root root variety is only for erosion control or landslide control so we have to have that kind of application we have to choose and then accordingly we have to like in case of gohati shilong road it didn't work because they have given certain other kind of grass not the real what it is yeah so it means that uh, by way of even mitigating the landslides there can be some additional benefits also so that's great it is yeah. too good you can cut uh, in every one month day. this much every day it grows by 1 inch so every month by it will be some two feet so you can cut it and use it as a shade or you can make lots of uh, household items or uh, uh, some kind of so, you know also that which can be sold in the market so if so they grow by itself means male female is there in one only means do they grow yeah. by itself what so is it the is system? only through plants root it uh, it is not okay. to be made through the seeds seed variety okay. is so not just good. put the root yeah. Oh, yeah one question is there in the chat box so i thought let me uh, ask you also that if uh, say if um, uh, they are growing in some area and the person wants to 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 uh, means the the landslides are subsided now so if the person wants to take uh, this vetiver grass out will he be able to take it out also after some certain time or now once he has grown it will when it is grown for let life. it better be remain there but then we have to check that which portion if you require you take it out whether it is essential or otherwise you make it for taking it out for other use you make it in a plain ground so that you can extract it and do other kind of work it is not desirable to take out the things because it will create a hole there then water will enter and water will yeah. enter then landslide will be more are there some examples of cultivation of this for say oil production or uh, yeah. some other items yeah, yeah yeah many 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 places but not in that manner people have not yet taken it seriously but in the south india so especially in tamil nadu yes they have taken it yeah and, so mr uh, ashish kar you got your response uh, to the question which you asked in the in the chat box if anybody else wants to ask anything he is free to write in the chat box or in the uh, q and a section to get uh, aware of uh, or get something more uh, better uh, 
clarity on any of the topics. Sir, uh, I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, is it invasive species? Species are invasive. all whatever BS1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, up to 9, they have made gen uh, some genetically, uh, but we simply locally know it by root variety or uh, okay. some we call oil variety like that and type 1, type 2, type 3 like that. So it is to be checked like the one that I have got in my house. It, is a, it has got long roots. It grow into long roots. I used to do to plant yes, here in Paola, so I miss her on too. That's why I'm very interesting. Okay. Yeah. We will, we are also, we'll also have it in our new campus so that we can distribute as and when required. The, yeah, the nursery yeah. of this. You can carry out a special center there so that all the varieties you grow there and check their genetic nature and their so soil types. And then what are the changes happening and soil chemistry, root chemistry, everything you can study systematically so that we can engineer it. In Japan, they have done like that. It is industry, yeah. agriculture, research, application all together. But in our country, Excellent. still it is. Excellent overview, sir. Thank you very much uh, for taking out time for, for this important uh, training program. Thank you very much. To both of you, uh, Dr. Dinpuya and Professor Chandan Ghosh, for really because in yesterday we talked about about various aspects of landslides, but today we focused on mitigation, and that's what is one of the most important uh, uh, characteristics or most important work of this uh, seminar too. Thank you very much. Hopefully, participants will take the lesson and take it forward so that uh, uh, the mitigation measures are taken up. To the best possible extent. So, uh, uh, my only can... appeal, yeah. uh, uh, Professor Deveshwalia, you know, my only appeal this time that I have become now conditional. Like in Mysore, we have conducted one program. I said that you have to establish this whatever research center or whatever research and application center. So, up, man, we will uh, definitely have to be a conditional, especially for your university. Uh, let us yeah. go for MOU. Uh, with uh, and uh, already we have been talking about that and make this research center because research application application research and your entire state and northeast then you can become uh, a nodal center for vertical research and we are going to have MOU very soon it is already draft is ready the IIT Guwahati is in next week yeah uh, they are also we are so we have got and called for this whatever center has to be there yeah. And we would like to have some samples so that we'll put up, uh, we'll grow uh, them that, here. That uh, I can send. Specific I have... variety means one to yeah. ten, whatever good variety is already known. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have got so we marketed already the land. Post also, Only thing by... is we need the sample. No sample we can send you by post. No problem. As yeah, a souvenir anytime. to you. Huh? Yeah, we'll bear the cost whatsoever. No cost. Cost is not required. It is a just. Uh, Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Organizers okay. can please take up. Uh, we are very happy to wind up the program today. Dot on on schedule. That's how we expect. That's how uh, we must be thankful to both the experts. They have stick to the time and they have deliberated excellently. So thank you again, once again, uh, organizers. Please take on. Megali, Dr. Megali. Okay. Uh, all the participants are requested to fill up the feedback form for day two from the link given in the chat box. And with the permission of Professor David Swalia and Dr. Amir Ali Khan sir, we end our second day of the three days online training program. And tomorrow the session will start at 11.30 a.m. So I request all of you to join back us tomorrow by using the same link of WebEx. And before that, I would like to express our deep sense of gratitude to our distinguished speakers for providing us the opportunity to learn from their experiences. And I also express our deep sense of gratitude to all the participants without whom this uh, program will not be possible.
I, on behalf of the Department of Geology, Northeastern Hill University, Silong, and on my own behalf, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to one and all, and especially to the entire team of NI, to the entire NIDF team. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you everyone. See you tomorrow at 11.30, followed by which there will be, after the two lectures, we'll be having a, uh, uh, valedictory program. After that, the certificates will be distributed. All of you, those who have not yet filled in the feedback form, you are requested to kindly uh, submit the feedback form. Tomorrow also it will be open so that you can submit so that it will ease us to give you the certificate with the correct name, whatever is written in the, in the feedback form, whatever 